Welcome back to Hands-On with Reinforcement Learning. In this section, we're talking about the contextual bandit. As we said before, the contextual bandit is a direct follow-on of the multi-armed bandit. And the difference is we don't only have one bandit, we have multiple bandits. So what happens when we have multiple bandits? In this section, we're going to take a look at number one. We're going to create an environment with multiple bandits using Python and NumPy. So this follows on directly from last section. The difference is we're going to go from one bandit to multiple bandits. This is actually really easy. But then make sure you understand what we're doing here. Because in multi-armed bandits, we have an environment. We have different actions. But there's actually no state. So no matter what the agent does, it's always facing the same four actions, and the same four actions have the same rewards. All we need to do is to figure out which action produces the best reward. Here, we're introducing state into the environment. What that means is now different states, i.e. if the agent is facing a different bandit, each reward, so each action produces a different reward. So now we need to create an agent that can learn that. In the second video, what we're going to do is to create our first policy gradients based reinforcement learning agent with TensorFlow. And what that really means is we're going to create an agent that learns how to crack the contextual bandits environment. And we're going to use something called policy gradient. And what that really means is just to kind of slowly shift the policy around um, according to how different parameters in the policy correspond to how much or how wrong our actions were using TensorFlow. And lastly, in the third video, we're going to take everything that I've created in part one and two and then write a better training loop, much like the one that we wrote in the last section to train the agent with the new and more complicated environment, and then we'll see what happens. So let's get right into this video. In this video, we're going to create an environment with multiple bands using Python and NumPy. As I said before, this is going to be an extension of the multi-armed band class, and we're going to make it more complicated. Specifically, we're going to complicate it by introducing states back into our environment so recall in Cartpo v0, we get four variables, of which one is the state. And then that state, in turn, has four numbers that are quite hard to understand. They represent uh, physics constants within the you know, constant physics variables um, within the environment. And so we're going to replicate the state. But instead of having for numbers that look quite difficult to understand, we're only going to have one number that is very easy to understand. And then we're going to write the code for the contextual bandit class. Now that we understand what the multi arm bandit environment does, let's crank it up a notch and upgrade our multi arm bandit environment into a contextual bandit environment. So what's the difference here? So what we need to think about is in the multi arm bandit environment, we don't have any sort of state, right? The environment only gives you four different actions, as you can see here, self.num actions. And each action gives you a different reward. And what we did in the last section was very simple. What we did was we wrote a very simple TensorFlow program to figure out what actions produce what kind of rewards. And by learning through many, many episodes of playing the multi-arm bandit environments, our TensorFlow program was able to understand which arm was best in terms of coming out with the best reward. So now let's look at what it looks like in contextual bandits. The idea of contextual bandits is that there is now a context, or alternatively, a state, where Different states give you different rewards under different actions. The first thing to notice is between the contextual bandit environment and the multi-arm bandit environment, 
we have a gets banded function in the contextual banded environment. What this allows us to do is to store what is the active bandit or what is the state of the environment and then feed it back to the agent through the get bandit function. So let's dig in and see how we can write this. It's actually incredibly simple and incredibly related to the multi arm bandit environment. So I encourage you to have it side by side when you try to like write this out. The first thing to, for us to do is to create a state variable. And for each state, we want to create four different rewards, representing four different rewards for different actions under different states. So what we do is create a NumPy array that stores three different arrays of four rewards. And then we also want to create a little bit of helper functions and variables in the form of number of bandits and number of actions so that we can feed it into our TensorFlow program later. The next thing we want to do is to create a gets bandit function, which very simply changes the active bandit in the environment using a random number and then feeds that back into whoever that is calling that function so that the agents can know what's the context currently in the environment. And the last thing, much like in the multi arm bandit environments, we create a pool function. This simply allows us to set up an agent that acts on the environment. The only thing that's different here is because now we have states, we actually need to look up what's the active bandit now and then ac execute that action. So unlike before, where we simply take the reward of the appropriate action, we now need to find the right bandit and then take the reward. And then everything else is really the same. Another thing that I want to draw your attention to is, remember when we're talking about the multi-arm bandit, what we're saying is the multi-arm bandit is a simplified environment, much, much like the one in Karspo. So now that we have the contextual bandit, actually the state here, like the number, the bandit that is active, that is analogous to the four numbers you see in the Karchpo environment. Now let us verify that we have implemented this contextual bandit class correctly. I'm now back in my terminal and I have loaded the contextual bandit file. Let's create a new environment that is our new contextual bandit class. And then the thing to try, and I'm just going to try this kind of by and large here, is to see whether the get bandit function gives us roughly different bandits every time. So that's great. So now we can see that the state of the contextual bandit environment is evolving every time, much like we have expected it to. And as an exercise, what you can do is actually run a for loop of 10,000, 20,000 times to make sure that the bandits that you're getting is actually equally spread amongst all four bandits, or three bandits, sorry. The other thing for us to try out is to make sure that the poo action, let's say we do action three, actually gives us some sort of reward. As you can see here that um, action two, in bandit 2, it has a very low probability of creating positive reward. Now let's see whether that's expected. So bear in mind that this is indexed at 0. So bandit 2 is actually this guy here. And we're pulling the second action, the action indexed at 2, which is this guy here. So you can see that amongst all the four numbers, all the four reward thresholds, this is actually fairly high. So I'm not surprised at all that over the last six or seven pools, we weren't able to produce a positive reward. So there we have it. We've implemented a contextual bandit class where it re reflects a new state on top of the multi-arm bandit environment. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this contextual bandit class and then implement also 
the agents and the training loop, much like what we've done with the multi arm bandit. Great. So we have written the code for the contextual bandit environment.